Let's step back in time to the year 1962, more than 50 years ago. Imagine a world where sports shoes were not as we know them today. A young man named Phil Knight had just finished his studies at Stanford University. He had a special dream, a dream of making better shoes for athletes all around the world. Little did he know this dream would turn into a gigantic company loved by millions of people. Phil wasn't just an ordinary guy, he loved running long distances. Back in university, he had a really smart idea. Phil noticed how Japanese cameras had successfully replaced the once dominant German cameras. And he thought, could Japanese shoes do the same thing to the famous Puma and Adidas shoes that everyone was wearing? Phil was super passionate about his idea. He loved running, he knew a lot about shoes, and he believed in the magic of his idea. So after he graduated, he decided to take a big step. He went all the way to Japan, just like a tourist. He wandered around, and in the city of Kobe, he found a store that sold shoes made by a company called Onitsuka Tiger. These shoes were really, really good. Phil was super brave. He walked into the store and said, Hey, I'm an American shoe distributor, and I want to bring your awesome shoes to America. The owner of the company was surprised, but also excited about Phil's enthusiasm. Phil didn't even have a real company yet, but he made up a name on the spot and said he'd be their distributor in the USA. And guess what? The owner said yes. Phil's confidence proved to be a game changer for him, as he became the sole distributor of Onitsuka Tiger in the USA. Back in America, Phil received his first shipment of 12 pairs of Onitsuka Tiger shoes in 1963. He was so excited. He didn't have a fancy store or anything, so he started selling these amazing shoes out of the back of his car. He drove to all the running tracks he could find, and people loved those shoes, but selling from his car wasn't scalable. Phil needed help to make his dream even bigger. He remembered his old coach from the University of Oregon, a famous guy named Bill Bowerman. This coach was like a shoe expert and knew everything about making shoes better for athletes. Phil showed him the Onitsuka Tiger shoes and Coach Bowerman liked them a lot. He wanted to be a part of this adventure. In 1964, Phil and Coach Bowerman became business partners. They created a new company called Blue Ribbon Sports. Each of them put $500 into it, and they were ready to change the world of sports shoes. They made a hefty investment on their first order, purchasing 300 pairs of shoes at a price of $3.33 per pair. The shipment arrived in April 1964, and thanks to Bill's connections, the entire stock was sold out by July of the same year. With their first year sales amounting to $8,000, Phil utilized the funds to hire sales personnel for his company. By 1965, their revenue grew to $20,000, allowing them to open their very own store in Santa Monica. While Phil handled the business aspect of the operation, Bill was the one responsible for innovation. He was the visionary that introduced jogging to America, and he authored a book about it that sold over a million copies in 1966. He also marketed tiger shoes for jogging, which was one of the first of its kind. Bowerman was a true innovator, always on the brink of new discoveries. With every new shipment from Onitsuka, he would analyze the shoes by cutting them open and making modifications to improve them, like adding more cushioning or using lighter materials. He would even send his recommendations to Japan, which helped him effectively design Onitsuka's shoes for them. It was Bill's design, the Cortez, that brought BRS into the mainstream. This shoe became one of the best-selling shoes in 1968, thanks to the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico. The Cortez propelled BRS sales to $300,000 in 1969. They were doing really well, but there was a problem. The shoes they sold were so popular that they couldn't keep up with the demand. Onitsuka, the company that made the shoes, was sending them new shipments too slowly. They were only sending what was left after they satisfied their local demand in Japan first. Phil and Bill were aware that they needed to grow beyond their current role as a mere distributor if they wanted to expand their business. They soon came to the realization that they had the upper hand in this regard, as the Cortez was actually Bowerman's creation. Once their contract with Onitsuka came to an end, they could start producing it for themselves. This worked out perfectly for them, as their contract was set to expire in 1972, just prior to the Munich Olympics. With that in mind, Phil had ample time to plan for the next phase of his business. In 1971, he began working on branding his company and was suggested to name it Nike, after the Greek goddess of victory. As he needed a logo, 
Phil went to a nearby university and found a graphic design student who created the iconic swoosh logo for just $35. That logo was the famous swoosh we all know today. It turned out to be a smart investment, and with the branding complete, Phil was ready for the Olympics. Instead of limiting himself to exclusive agreements, he established a network of subcontractors across Japan, giving him more control over production and allowing him to expand his business. From that point on, Nike's growth was unstoppable. They became the largest sportswear company in America in 1989, thanks to their brilliant marketing campaigns like Just Do It, and by signing on rookie athletes that would eventually become famous worldwide. Today, Nike is not just a brand. It's a global phenomenon with a market value of over $166 billion as of 2023. They have continued to innovate, adapt, and grow, solidifying their place as the world's leading sportswear company. Their success story is a testament to their vision, resilience, and ability to adapt and grow in a rapidly changing world. If you're inspired by Nike's journey and aspire to reach similar heights of success, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. You can also leave a comment sharing your dreams and aspirations. Just do it.